Godzilla and Kong's intelligence has been up for fierce dispute for years now. So today on Koji Center, we will finally put this question to rest and find out who is the smartest titan. The analysis platform will put both of these titans' minds under severe scrutiny, but not only that, we will uncover the past evidence that proves to us which of these titans deserves to be called smart and who shall be called dumb. If you continue to come back to watch these videos and haven't subscribed yet, then come on! It's about time you hit that red subscribe button by now, and hit that like button while you're at it. Coming up, Godzilla vs. Kong Battle of the Minds. Before we begin to test these kaiju's brains, let's see how you can test your brain and see if you have the ability to wage war against 12 battle-hardened factions, tough bosses, badass champions, and millions of other players! It's Raid Shadow Legends! Use the link below or scan this code to play on mobile and PC to have access to a ton of champions to battle with, but especially this new guy. A new legendary champ that not so long ago used to be this dude. Yeah, not so strong! Raid's favorite underdog always spending his time in futile attempts at becoming a better champ. But now, Raid rewards this fellow with becoming an ultimate champ. Or is he just getting replaced by a much better in every way version of himself? Yeah, he's getting usurped by Ultimate Death Knight, a new legendary hero confirming that this guy's dreams have once again been shattered. <laughs> This guy can increase your squad's defense by 30%, can block enemy attacks, and wield amazing skills. The best part is that you can get this guy for free if you log in now and play for 7 days between now and October 27th. And also, if you use code DKRISES, you'll get even more free stuff to level up your new champ to level 50 and 5-star ascension. But there's more! This month, Raid just released a giant new feature, Awakening, and a brutal new dungeon, the Iron Twins Fortress. Bring these twins down and you'll get a big payoff, and Awakening lets you choose a blessing that can boost your champ's battle performance. So if you're ready to raid, new players can click on the link below or scan this code to get the champ Vergis, this in-game loot, all worth almost $30. Your prizes will be found up here. Thanks to Raid for sponsoring this video, and now let's go back to some Titan Brains. In this episode, we will completely change how you view the concept of intelligence, or being smart as we know it. Admittedly, measuring the intelligence of any creature, whether it's an insect, human, jellyfish, or bird, is a very difficult thing to do without being biased. For us humans, for instance, we tend to measure intelligence using dumb metrics such as how we perform in school, or how many chess games we've actually won. But the truth is that intelligence is much more than that. It's actually how you're able to process information in your brain depending on the situation that you're in. You know the movie scenes when people are just chilling and then all of a sudden birds begin to fly away, and then these supposed smarter humans proceed to get murked by a natural disaster? Now, you may argue that birds are dumber than humans, but these birds just outlived these humans because they know and sense stuff humans don't. The result being these birds outliving them. Similarly, there are things that both Kong and Godzilla are smart at, but some things that they heavily outweigh each other in terms of cognition. This word is important in this episode, so here's what it basically means. Mental action of acquiring knowledge, understanding it, and putting it to good use. To better understand their intelligence and compare them to each other from an unbiased perspective, we will cover six types of cognition, which are perception, attention, communication, memory, learning, and thought. And make sure to stick to the end, because with these metrics, you will be able to accurately measure the intelligence of almost anything. Number 1. Perception To understand the rest of the categories, we really need to cover this one first. Perception covers how many senses you have, and how many actually contribute to said creature's learning process. Us humans have five, but titans? A lot more. Let's begin with Godzilla. Put simply, this guy is a walking sensor of all things. Equipped with very good eyesight, thermal vision, a good sense of hearing, nerve endings that can detect all natural phenomena, weather changes, entropy, natural disasters, the Earth's magnetic field, very good sense of smell, the ability to locate all titans in the world, and ability to detect radioactive sources. Note that this massive influx of different types of data is being piled into Godzilla's brain, which means that he is aware of a lot more things that happen in his surroundings than many other titans. But what about Kong? Well, he's not too bad either. Kong's senses very much resemble our own, but at a magnified scale. Good eyesight that allows him to see for many miles, very good olfactory organs, good hearing, ability to feel other nearby Alpha Titans, being able to hone into energy sources, etc. 
But in this particular category, Kong falls short of Godzilla simply because he can't detect as many things as the G-Man. Put simply, there are forces that exist that Kong is never really aware of or feels, which means that Godzilla's knowledge of the Earth is much more vast than Kong's. To put this into perspective, there are animals that can see ultraviolet light, something we can't see, meaning that those animals have information stored in their brains that we don't, giving them an advantage in certain situations. In terms of perception, it's clear that Godzilla holds an edge, but this won't matter at all if these titans don't know how to use this information effectively. Number 2. Attention This category of cognition is very basic, but crucial for any superintelligent creature. How well can you focus on stuff? Believe it or not, there are animals that do this better than others. Even simple things such as focusing on a flying object and being able to follow it with your eyes. So, why even bother discussing this? This ability can get more complicated in terms of something called multitasking, or dealing with many things at once. So you may already know where we are going with this. In the world of Titans, the most dangerous thing to deal with is another Titan. But what if it's more than just one? Well, let's go back to the topic of perception. These Titans are equipped with senses that help them be aware of anything around them. Godzilla, for instance, has all the tools and senses necessary to locate anything in its scope of detection. But while in combat, we have seen that Godzilla will struggle when facing two opponents, or while getting attacked from many fronts, like when he faced Ghidorah. So far, Godzilla has not given us enough evidence to suggest that he's a good multitasker, even with his OP senses. Kong is almost the same. To be fair, Kong has been seen to face multiple enemies at once, but is really put to the test when facing a more stronger type of creature, such as Warbats. In both of these cases, we witnessed how humans had to come in and interfere in these fights, resulting in helping both of these titans gain the edge. In terms of paying attention to their surrounding elements, these titans perform pretty well, with Godzilla being aware of a lot more things. But dealing with opposing titan threats, both seem to have trouble with more than one. Up next is a type of cognitive ability that will be crucial to both titans in the next upcoming MonsterVerse film. Number 3. Communication This is more than just being able to talk to your friends. This is your ability to let others know your intentions, think about what you are saying, what you are listening to, and your ability to understand what is being said to you by members of your own kind and other species. Yeah, <laughs> it's a lot more complex than you might think. So how well do these guys communicate? In the past, we have seen the G-Man use something well known as his intimidation display to communicate to any other surrounding organism that he's not playing around. Another alternative method of communication is seen when he communicates with Mothra via sonar, emitting clicks or pulses that are picked up by both creatures relaying messages. But remember, this is more than just sending messages, it's also understanding them. Godzilla understands that bowing means submission, lowering of a weapon means ceasefire, and deactivating a fleet means surrender. His advantage over Kong's methods of communication is his reach or bandwidth, not to mention his potential ability to emit an alpha call and communicating with other titans around the globe. Kong, on the other hand, has other methods of communication. Let us remind you that Kong belongs to a species that are known to be social creatures, titans that lived in a society and a complex civilization with humans. You heard that right, these guys and the Iwi were one tribe in the Hollow Earth. Therefore, being able to communicate amongst themselves and with humans was imperative for the development of a civilization. It is also important to note that this species most likely had a better emotional grasp. They understand facial gestures, communicate their moods well, and Kong even went as far as learning sign language to communicate with humans, understanding words such as home, family, enemy, and even Godzilla. So, can you really compare these? No. Both methods of communication are important in their own right, with Godzilla being able to discern and emit messages to almost anyone at any distance, and Kong being able to have some rudimentary level of communication with other titans at close range, but a crucial link with humans. This communication between Kong and Godzilla is on to a good start, but will need to be strengthened before they face off against this colossal threat that they will encounter in the next MonsterVerse installment. Number 4. Memory 
This is your ability to retain information in your brain and being able to recall this information when you need it. This one is interesting because we are dealing with titans with a colossal age gap. Yes, Godzilla is a titan that has been around for millions and millions of years, witnessing multiple extinctions, cataclysmic events, and all sorts of forces that changed the face of the Earth to what we see today. So what does this mean? This simply means that his repertoire of information held inside his brain far outweighs Kong's. This is something known as experience, and it doesn't stop there. Remember that in the world of Titans, the most important types of experience are confrontations with other kaiju, whether they're skirmishes or wars. That's right, there's a high probability that the G-Man was alive during the Great Titan War mentioned in GVK. Because he's lived longer than Kong, there are things that Godzilla is aware of that Kong isn't. And also, because of Godzilla's superior amount of senses, there are things that Godzilla would know about even if Kong lived for the same amount of time. But that doesn't make Kong dumber. Let us explain. An example of this is comparing a newborn chimpanzee's overall intelligence to a full-grown African elephant's. When both put up against a lion, for instance, the elephant would immediately recognize the lion as a carnivorous threat, something the child isn't necessarily aware of. Yet. The chimpanzee will grow up to be more intelligent than the elephant in some regards, but not everything. Same applies here. Kong specimens are seen to remember things even when they are newborns, as we see Kong in some way remembering what happened to his parents once he was born. His memory retention is also pretty similar to us humans, being able to recognize people, their smells, territory, and piece together past and present evidence to know what he's up against. For example, Kong quickly becomes attracted to a source of Titan energy in the Hollow Earth, and identifies this place as an ancient home of the members of his own kind and that they were once a powerful civilization. All this was pieced together in his mind while being the very first time he's ever set foot in the Hollow Earth. Both Titans are highly capable of retaining memory and using them. Of course, Godzilla having an edge on the amount and type of information acquired over many years. The next two types of cognition will be attributes vital for Alpha Titans. Number 5. Learning Again, a simple word with a very complex meaning. Unlike memory, where you simply remember stuff at a given time, this is how fast you process or how well you understand stuff that goes on or exists around you. An example of this is seeing someone use a hammer to make a hole in the wall, but you don't have one and instead you pick up a rock to do the same thing. Now to the Titans. The fact that Godzilla is still alive to this day after the rest of his kind died out is a clear indicator that this particular Godzilla is the equivalent of a genius of his kind. Growing up as a Gojira was not easy, especially since your own kind is considered a valuable resource and a sworn enemy by Mutos and Kongs. And not to mention this guy. It would have taken a very fast learner to survive such conditions. Same goes for the Kongs. Being titans with no special atomic abilities left them with no other option than to learn to use their surrounding elements to their advantage. In other words, tools. That's right, this type of cognition proves to be one of the most important ones for the Kongs. This cognitive attribute allowed them to climb the food chain and become a mighty civilization, allowing them to build magnificent structures and bring down other titans without special abilities of their own. Also, notice how Kong was already an avid tool user without anyone to teach him how to use them. This means that in addition to being a fast learner, this kaiju is self-taught. This learning ability goes as far as being able to be taught by other species such as humans. So it's safe to say that in terms of learning on the spot, Kong is in good standing. But this goes further. Many may think that just because Kong is a tool user, Godzilla is at a disadvantage here. This is not 100% true, since Godzilla did show clear signs that he understood how these were used. More on this in the next section. What really matters is how this knowledge is used in combat. Number 6. Thought Put simply, this is your inner voice that guides your decision-making, problem-solving, reasoning, your strategic acumen. Both Titans are extremely strategic in this regard, but differ in a few aspects. To begin, let's debunk a misconception mentioned previously that Godzilla does not understand how to use tools at all. Well, kind of true, this doesn't necessarily mean that he doesn't know how they work. 
Not to mention the fact that he doesn't need to use these rudimentary tools since he's equipped with atomic breath and good melee weaponry. But the G-Man knows what they're capable of. A good example of this concept is when Kong used his axe to block and absorb atomic energy, which then powered it up and turned it into a more powerful weapon. Godzilla learned this quite quickly. So yes, he knew how this thing worked now and how powerful it was, especially after this moment. Now, a few hours later, while they were both fighting Mechagodzilla, the G-Man remembered that this weapon could be charged with his atomic breath, proceeded to fire at it, and Kong, who also just recently learned the special abilities of this axe, was able to wield it and put an end to Mechagodzilla. So, Godzilla here acknowledged that his atomic breath was weak after losing a battle with Mechagodzilla. The only option left was to power up the weapon that previously knocked him out. This action was Godzilla's initiative, Godzilla's strategy. No, we aren't giving Godzilla full credit here. It was Kong's original idea to use the axe. After all, it was a Kong specimen that put this weapon together, making this a true collaborative effort. The differences lie in approach, however. Although Godzilla may seem like a titan that thinks things through, Kong leverages cunning and deception a bit more. For instance, the moment when he distracted Godzilla, making him turn in the opposite direction, exposing his back. Admittedly, the Kong species seems to be at its full potential when they are in a group. Similar to humans, we perform better as a species when in a group, forming better strategies and fighting better as a unit. In conclusion, there are scenarios where Kong would be smarter than Godzilla, and other instances where Godzilla would seem smarter than Kong. It all depends on the situation. In the upcoming MonsterVerse film, both Kong and Godzilla will likely face a threat unlike anything they have seen before, putting their cognitive attributes to the test and forcing them to work together as a unit. The cognitive attributes discussed in this video can be used to gauge the intelligence of almost any creature. Your pet, your buddies, fictional characters, you name it. We hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please consider subscribing and supporting our channel by checking out our merch store in the links below. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.